On today's show, Tesla posts a profit for the first quarter of the year despite the devastating impact of coronavirus. Xpeng launches the P7 sedan and claims it has the longest range of any car on sale in China. And EPA documents show that Porsche willingly dropped its range estimates for the Taycan electric sports sedans long before they went on sale. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and we are 50% community owned. Why not switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another Ecotech Roundup show. I hope you're all well and you're all safe. And I hope that those of you who are able to go back to work under New Zealand's level three are not facing too many challenges getting things back to normal. We start today's show with Tesla's official first quarter earnings report for the year, which was released after the close of business on Wednesday, US time. So, you know, middle of the day on Thursday for those in New Zealand. As Tesla is a US company, I should also note that figures are in US dollars, not Kiwi dollars. Despite the absolutely terrible impact that coronavirus has made on businesses and communities around the world, Tesla's official figures actually reveal a not too bad state. There was, of course, an understandable drop in vehicle production and delivery over the previous quarter. But I should note that Model 3 and Model Y figures were just a skosh higher than in Q4, with Model S and Model X wholly responsible for those lower numbers, not X and Y as I misspoke midweek in a video. Sorry, I had a brain freeze. You'll find a full analysis of the earnings from earlier this week on this channel, but the important figures right now for many are these. A nine cent per share profit using the GAAP method and a one dollar and twenty four cents profit using the non GAAP system. This is impressive given the current crisis. Audi published EPA ratings for its upcoming e-tron Sportback this week, as well as confirmed official pricing for those in the US. Sleeker and a little more aerodynamic than the e-tron SUV that it shares most of its chassis, drivetrain and power electronics with, the e-tron Sportback has a 7% greater range per charge than the e-tron SUV. This is thanks to a tweak to allow a little extra unlocked battery capacity as well as an improved drive system software. Like its big brother, the e-tron Sportback is capable of charging at up to 150 kilowatts from a compatible CCS quick charge station. It will go on sale in the US from $78,395. At the start of the week, Chinese electric automaker Xpeng unveiled the production version of its P7 electric sedan through an online reveal event. We'd already seen the P7 in concept form, and while Xpeng itself is only six years old, the P7 is actually its second car. The company says it offers the longest range of any electric car on sale in China. It's powered by an 80.9 kilowatt hour battery pack built by Cattle. It's available with either a rear wheel drivetrain or an all wheel drivetrain. And the P7 super long range claims 706 kilometers of range in its best configuration. But what's particularly interesting is the price. The entry level P7 starts at a lower price than a Tesla Model 3 and is nearer to a Model S in terms of size. It also comes with onboard autopilot like features. But that's something that's causing a bit of contention as Xpeng is embroiled in a legal dispute with Tesla over just where it got that system from. Bollinger, apparently that's how you say it, so sorry if I've been saying it wrong to this point, has also been busy this week, announcing a new variation to its upcoming B2 all-terrain Class 3 pickup truck. Called the Bollinger B2 chassis cab, it is, as the name suggests, a B2 pickup with just a bare chassis behind the cab. It's being marketed at the highly lucrative custom outfitted vehicle market, where specialist firms take a large production Class 3 truck, sometimes even larger, and add on specialist bodies like a tow truck or refrigerator equipment or an ambulance body, or maybe even just a utility truck with a lift. Even though Bollinger hasn't started production of the B1 and B2 yet, this diversification could really help the company lower overall costs. At the same time, it will help specialist customers to go zero emission for their fleet vehicles. We've already reported that it's now looking pretty likely that the launch of the Ford Mustang Mark E electric SUV will get delayed a little because of coronavirus. This is despite efforts from Ford to try and keep the launch schedules on track. And frankly, we're not sure yet how delayed the launch will be. But this week we did learn that Ford is now planning contactless test drives for the Mark E. This allows reservation holders the chance to put their potential new vehicle through its paces without putting anyone at risk of becoming ill. 
before they have to confirm their order. In about three or four weeks time, Ford says it will have finalized dates for when customers will be able to convert those reservations into confirmed orders. And so the whole idea of the contactless test drive will be an essential part in that process. As usual, Whenever there's a Tesla quarterly earnings report, the accompanying earnings call with both investors and analysts brings up some pretty interesting tidbits of information. This time around, there were some very interesting things said. We're going to cover some of them. Elon Musk said that stay-at-home orders within the United States were fascist. Uh, I'm not going to cover that one. But in the same call, he complained that Tesla Model S Long Range Plus should have been given a 400-mile rating by the EPA, but alleges that the EPA engineer responsible for testing left the keys in the vehicle overnight with a door ajar. This resulted in the Model S Long Range Plus remaining in full power mode and draining 2% of the vehicle's battery overnight. Since Wednesday, though, the EPA has come out and said that it disputes this claim and is happy to discuss any technical issues with Tesla as it does with all automakers. Attitudes towards electric vehicles vary from person to person at large legacy automakers. Some executives are skeptical about EVs, while others are embracing of the new technology. Honda Canada's new CEO appears unfortunately to sit in the former category, telling local reporters this week that there's not enough consumer demand for electric vehicles in Canada to help the country meet its Paris Accord commitments. He added standard tropes about electric vehicles being too expensive and too impractical and appealed on the Canadian government not to dictate which cars automakers should produce. I should note at this point that this is in reaction to Canada's goal of having just 5 to 10 percent of all new cars zero emission in 10 years time. This seems to suggest that the previous hopes you all had that the Honda e might end up coming to Canada are likely now dashed. Tesla fans have been eagerly awaiting news of Tesla's Class 8 semi for some time now. So when Elon Musk confirmed earlier this week that we would have an update on both it and the second generation Roadster, people started to get excited. Yet on Wednesday in Tesla's earnings report and during the quarterly earnings call, we heard that Tesla has made the decision to push back the production of its semi to 2021. This now means it's two years behind its original schedule. Neither Tesla nor Elon Musk went into details discussing the reasons for the changed production schedule. I'm guessing it's likely that Tesla wants to build a dedicated production facility for the Tesla Semi before it even contemplates series production, because it's running out of production spaces right now. There was no news on when we could expect the second generation Roadster, but as usual, when I do have more info on that, I'll share. Over the last couple of weeks, we've been hearing some very interesting things about real-world range tests of various versions of the Porsche Taycan Sports sedan. If you add my own real-world test drive where I easily managed the quoted range while driving in a pretty spirited way, last week we heard several drivers have easily added an extra 50% of range over the EPA test figures for the Porsche Taycan 4S. So we've known for a while that something was amiss. This week, we had our suspicions confirmed when car and driver explained that EPA documentation clearly shows that Porsche willingly lowered actual EPA estimates for all of its Taycan variants. This, I'd guess, was so that Porsche customers with little or maybe no EV experience still found out that they were getting the performance that sales material suggested they should, which frankly is a smart move for Porsche's first EV. The International Energy Agency has released an official report on the impact that the coronavirus will have on global greenhouse gas emissions. It says that overall emissions around the world will drop by 8% this year because of the terrible pandemic. The drop is, of course, primarily down to reduced emissions from transportation. And it's already showing us what an impact our travel has on the world we live in. Without concerted efforts to change the way we travel and work, moving forwards after everything goes back to normal, this 8% drop could be transitory and proves that the positives of what have been a terrible, terrible few months could be lost. And finally, as I've just said, one of the ways to keep our carbon emissions lower as we forge a brave new path towards lower fossil fuel use is to transition all current modes of transport to battery electric or low emissions variants. And that, of course, does also include airplanes. Which is why you might be pleased to hear that air taxi service Quantum Air has just announced it's planning what it says is the world's first electric air taxi service. It's going to launch it next year. 
making use of the eFlyer 2 aircraft from Bi Aerospace, which apparently costs around $23 per hour of flight to fuel versus more than $110 if you were to use a conventional gasoline-powered Cessna 172, Quantum Air believes its new service, which will be called Quantum X, will be both popular and profitable. The service will operate in the greater Los Angeles area, saving those with enough pennies the absolute hours and hours of horror of traffic jams. And on that note, it's your lot for today. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show, the more the merrier. And if you've got feedback, please do send it our way. Make sure too that you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And of course, I'm going to ask you if you've switched to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. If you haven't, well, it's about time you did. It's super easy to make the switch. And if you do, you will help New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean, green, renewable power that's generated locally and will keep the land beautiful. We'll be making some more fun content for you all to enjoy next week. But until then, please remember to stay safe, wash your hands and keep healthy. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time. Bye.